Today is the 9th of November and it's about half two in the afternoon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how I came up with my own solution to a Moxon Voice hardware, the hardware for the Moxon Voice. So to start with, I had some mahogany that was given to me by a, a very good friend of mine, Gary Walsh, and I had enough left to do the back piece. So this back piece here, it's, it's two pieces of mahogany, which I have temporarily screwed together. Um, so I can align the three pieces up and do the through holes for the hardware that I'm going to be using. And then we have the third part. It's going to be a very heavy voice. Then we have the third part here, which is a lovely piece of figured mahogany here. There's a lovely figure on top, which I'll be keeping. Um, for the face of the voice. So let me put this piece on this and explain the hardware to you. So the first thing we need to do, guys, is we need to put the three pieces together, which is what I've done. They're screwed together. Now these are not fully planed up. I have the faces, these two faces, which meet together to be glued. They're planed, and we square up at the top edge and the bottom edge when the voice is together. So how are we gonna go about making the boxing voice? Well, the boxing voice is gonna, so how am I gonna start out about making a boxing voice? So my boxing voice will start this way. It will start with a coach bolt, okay? A two euro coach bolt, that's all this bolt costs, two euros. Um, that's the fourth thing we're gonna do. The second thing is, I have a scrap of eight millimeter bar. Okay, it's just a piece of bar that's been lying around the workshop for, I don't know how long, a couple of years. And what I gotta do is, I cut a piece and I bent it like that. And I'm gonna go over to my son now shortly and I'm gonna get him to weld that bar onto that face. Okay, that's the fourth thing we're gonna do. And, the se and another thing we're gonna do, for actually the fourth thing we'll do is, if you look at a coach bolt, you have a square shank at the top. Square shank is no good for the way I'm going to do this voice. So we need to foil that down, like what I've done there. And this is done with a hand foil. It takes about 10 minutes. It's a step that you have to do. It's well worth doing. Now, let's drill the hole for these using a brace. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my brace, my bit into it first, and then I will get a square, okay, and I will keep that parallel as I can. There you go. That's damn good there. And I'm really, yep, I'm good there. Perfect. And just to show you how good it is. That's exactly what we want. Absolutely perfect. And a little bit of playing, a little small bit of play, that's what we're looking for. So, I'm going to drill the other side now. Ugh. <sighs> 
Corner of it. And finish them on through the side. We have got that as it's a true bolt. And now you can see where I'm at. Okay. This little bit of a handle here we fabricated. We'll go on that. And this will be our handle, our twisting me mechanism. Okay. So, our next job is to take these apart now and drill a wider hole here to drop the nut into. So let's, is I want to chop that nut in there nice and tight. Okay. Now I'm not going to glue the nut in because there's no need to glue that nut in. Because it's going to be sandwiched between these two here, between this one and that one. So the nut will never go anywhere. So long as you have it tight and every time you put the bolt in, it seats. That's all we want. Okay, guys. So what we're going to do now is, right, we're going to now take a 12 millimeter wood chisel. We're going to sit it on the line. I'm going to chop that in there. If I can see me lines, that is. I'm struggling with seeing anything, so. Okay. Have it there now. Now, whatever you do, guys, do not chop on the line. Keep away from the line about a millimetre or so. <coughs> and the reason is, <coughs> excuse me, we want to tap this nut in that it doesn't slop about. I can explain myself now. Um, the first thing I want to explain is that I've put a, a marker, a felt tip marker here on the depth of the nut. We don't really want to go any deeper than that nut. <coughs> so now if you look at what I'm doing, <coughs> that now passes through that. Okay, guys, <clears throat> we can now see the bolt going in there now. Okay. You can see it coming through. All right. Now, in return, that will slide into that one. No problem. Now, what we've got is... <clears throat> when this one goes on to that... Okay, I have exactly four inches, a hundred millimeters of clearance in that there, which is great because you're not going to be any more than four inches wide, you know, when you're when you're open. Okay, so let's put the whole lot. Let's let's just wind the whole lot up and see how it works. And there we have it, guys, <coughs> coming together there now. Okay. And if we put the handle on it then, we have a lovely good, with a good handle to crank, to crank this down and give us all the pressure we need. Now, a coach bolt is plenty strong and the threads are plenty big on it. You don't need a 15 millimeter bar. That's a 12 millimeter bar there. Um, it's, it's, it's plenty big. Uh, it's plenty big for what I'm going to be doing. So, let me get on with going over to my son and getting these handles welded. And we'll come back and show you what, what part two was about. The, the, the second part of it.
So guys, I just want to show you the setup first of what we started out with. Now, as, you, as, as I told you earlier, we started out with a coach bolt about 8 inches long, 200 millimeters. I'll just double check that there now for you. And what we done was, I took this and I took a piece of bar that I had and I cut it. And I was able to shape a handle. And I went over to my son and he welded on the handle. Now again, I can do all this, but I have a small welder outside, but look, we need to get it fixed. Um, but here's a more industrial one. I'm not experienced on an industrial welder, so I got him to do it. So, this is what we end up with. This is the handle here that I'm telling you about. Okay, in all its glory. And if you look, it goes all the way through. All right, and it twists real easy. Okay. And there we have the tail look. So, the other thing I wanted to show you was that on the inside I have a washer. But as you can see, there's a little spot weld on, on the washer, which stops this from going in and out. Because as I wind this, I want this to come out and go back in as I wind it. I don't want this crack of taking it out and pulling the timber. And you want to be able to tweak it. And that's why I locked this carriage bolt in with the washer. Oh guys, there we have it. That's all I needed to make this lovely mox on voice. Okay. So the mechanism is made from a 200 millimeter coach bolt and a little scrap piece of bar to form the handle. So Two euro, two euro for a couch bolt, two washers, and a piece of bar. So I used two of these, which was four euro. I used a piece of scrap bar that was lying around, and I got it welded. A tenner. Throw a guy a tenner to weld two little spot welds. Great job. As you can see, guys, you can see how it's made. It's just some scraps of mahogany that was lying around the workshop. Well, I won't call them scraps, but pieces of mahogany that were lying around the workshop. And it turned out very well. There you can see the bit of handle that was welded on, and I torn two teardrops to lift it up and down. So, guys, this is the Mox and Voice finished. Made from solid mahogany and um, pieces that were in the workshop. Um, 
probably a bit expensive wood wires to be met using mahogany but anyway it's what i had it's what i used and the hardware was plain and simple it was just a coach bolt that's all it was just a coach bolt and we welded on a piece of bar that we bent roughly about eight degrees each way six to eight degrees enough for us to put two little teardrop handles on it okay um you can see them there they turned out really really well so guys i spent four euro on two of these four euro and i had a scrap piece of bar to bend for the handles but at the most expensive point if you bought four of those that would be eight euro and you could use one of these for the handles and then you'll cover up the thread and cover up this section with your torn teardrop guys it's just a quick insight as to what i've made and um, just to show you that we don't need to spend big money on hardware if you have the money fair play i mean i'm not knocking the hardware you know if i could afford benchcraft i probably would have bought it but just at the moment it's not affordable so we have to improvise and that's what i done i use the coach bolt and um, there are advantages by the way with benchcraft oh yeah you can it's got a bigger thread and you're able to spin this on quicker and release it quicker this is a tighter thread it takes that bit longer but nevertheless it does the same job okay the principles are the same it clamps two jaws together to hold wider working now i have i have 25 inches right um 645 millimeters between centers okay and that suits me for the high boy because the high boy panels are 21 inches and 550 mil and i can get a full panel in there which is great so now i've no excuse i can go ahead and i can do the dovetails it's a project i've been waiting to build this long long time i'm a long time wanting to build this but i didn't know how i was going to get past the handles until i built the saw voice and this is the saw voice here you've all seen the saw voice and how the hardware came around was same principle a coach bolt to use as a clamp and that's what i used here a coach bolt the only other thing i done guys is i don't like the threads sticking out so i turned it the other way so that the threads are always out the back you never know someone could be in the workshop they could bump into it bang their head like the grandchildren or whatever and you, you don't want that um anyway guys from an irish woodworker story i'm phil gainer thanks very much for following um this little bit of a build Slon.